Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Network Merchandise Shop. Pick up your logo merchandise by heading over to abvnetwork.com, clicking on shop, and start filling your basket today. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers a fully customizable carrying case that allows you to take your favorite distilled spirits or cocktail ingredients with you. Whether you're looking for something for yourself, a customized gift, or logoed items for your business gift shop, The Bar to Go can help. Check them out at thebartogo.com. That's the number two in the bar to go. Don't forget our friends at Neely Family Distillery now ship their unique distilled spirits directly to you. To order yours, simply call 859-394-3258. Tell them the ABV Network sent you. And now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we are going to be awarding our fifth winner in year two of the Challenge Coin Cocktail Contest. My name is McNew. Please join me in welcoming my co-host, Steve Akeley, along with our special guest judges, Tim Slaya, Bill Lewis, and the world's greatest bartender, Molly Wellman. (laughs) Hello! (laughs) Molly Wellman's with us, yes. Our, Our cocktail contest is totally elevated now, Molly, so this is exciting stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm so excited. I, I, this is the first cocktail contest I've judged where I didn't get to taste the cocktail. Though. I know it <laughs> is different, right? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I'm really excited. This is I, I'm always ready for a challenge. So, so it's it's all about yeah how they do it and uh, yeah it, you know the, so it's uh, there's a little flair that goes to it as well. But we'll get to that stuff in just a second. For right now, I just want to check in with you. How are things going at your at your bar? Well, you know they're. Um, they're going. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's going, it's it's going. Um, every day is a new uh surprise. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> you can imagine. But um, yeah. Uh, people are coming out. I had a great a great crowd last night. So it was a lot of fun. Great. I love my Tuesday nights. I work on Tuesday nights, and I uh, like for ha- uh, from four to ten. And it is the best time. I love it so much. So, yeah, it was great last night. <laughs> Excuse oh, me. That's good to hear. Well, so, there's a pro tip. Yeah, there's a pro Four tip. to ten at Japs on Tuesdays. On Tuesdays. Yeah. Oh, they're on Tuesdays. Heck yeah. Yeah, that's, my, that's when you can actually talk to me. Because you guys always come on the weekend. I'm running around with my head cut off. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. You come on Tuesday. I actually have time to talk to you and tell you stories and yeah, that's the secret. <laughs> that's the secret. Okay, I've got to remember that. I will be uh, make sure that I'm there on a Tuesday coming up here. So that'll be that'll be fun. The best so, day. And you have a good team, right? Everybody's still in place. Because I know I know staffing is such an issue these days in in, in your business. Are, are you doing okay uh, that that way? So kind of, sorta. I have a really great staff that I've had for a long time. I hired one new guy. He's doing great. He's really great. He's a go getter. He wants to learn everything. He's one. He's like a dream, you know. Right. Uh, but I'm having trouble with barbacks. I've gone through. I'm on my third barback in like three weeks. So that's been tough. That's but, a tough job, right? So, so yeah, it's not. Right. It's really not. It's not, it's brain a, not tough. Yeah, yeah. It's tough to keep people in that position, though, because yeah. yeah, it's. I mean, it's a Saturday night, so trying right. to get a bar back to like stay on a Saturday night, it's just it's hard. So uh, a lot of them think that it's just like. I can come and go and say what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's this like, is a business we're running here, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't think they quite understand that. So right. anyway, but but that but besides that, it's I mean, my team is amazing. I am so proud of them. I I can't say enough great things about it. I think they're the best staff I have ever worked with. So I love them. Great. And, of, and of course, we, I, along with everyone else, you know, that's into the stuff, follows you on social media. And we know that just this week, new hair color, right? You're blonde. <laughs> I, love, I love it. <laughs> you had the big announcement. I'm back to blonde. I'm like, all right. <laughs> yeah. I know. Today I was like, okay, we're going to go back to blonde now. I'm ready. I'm done with the color and people yeah, just being like, oh my God, your hair. <laughs> right. So. Right. I feel like much more me. In fact, but I, right now I don't recognize myself as I say. Is that yeah? Is that kind of strange? It would be like me if I shaved off my beard. I, I think I would yeah. struggle just walking past the mirror for a while. That's exactly weird. how it is. I have to double take. Like, wait, wait, wait. Right, wait, wait. <laughs> Who, who's here? Who's here? 
And the last time you and I talked, I was up there for an event and you said your husband was getting ready to pick up a Corvette. Did he get that? And, and what's oh, going yeah. on with the car? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, we've been riding around in the, this uh, C8 like since uh, since the end of uh, July. And it's been a lot of fun. It's rapid blue and he's put all these neon uh, yellow and um, accents on it and Lambo doors and the whole thing. So that's been a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, I guess so. Yeah, that does seem very cool. Yeah. Very really cool. cool. So, yeah, <laughs> so great time. <laughs> excellent. Well, guess what? Before we kind of get into the show, we get the cocktail contest. We do a little drinking. Uh, I know what you've got there. Uh, you want to try to do a cork pop and tell the audience what you're drinking tonight? Yeah, I'd love to. Uh, so I'm staying local uh, with a little new riff from okay. Northern Kentucky. That wasn't bad. That wasn't bad. Cork pop wise. You, you have the lead right now. I have a bottle of Weller foolproof here. This is from Jap since 1879. I wish it's not actually. I've from heard that. about that place. Huh? That would be cool. If I, if I could, but that's not from. from here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, mine wasn't as good as Molly's. Molly has the lead right now. McNew, what do you got? Um, so I always like a cocktail on cocktail night, but I was pretty lazy about it today. So I have the Handy and Schiller Barrel Old Fashioned out of Buffalo Trace. Right on. It's delicious <laughs> for a pre-made cocktail. I'm surprised. Right. No cork pop, though. No so cork pop, though. <laughs> Mr. Bill, you're next. Also one of our judges here, Mr. Bill. Well, uh, I got something that Steve introduced me to, and uh, I really like it. It's Stella Rye. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, that was Bill. good. That was good. I, I think Bill, Bill that took one. over the lead there, Molly. Yeah, I think he did. That was a great pop. I like yeah. that. That's going to be tough to beat, but we've got one more judge today, and it is Tim Swyatt. Tim, what do you got? I have the Buzzard's Roost Peated Barrel Rye. Peated Barrel Rye. Let's see if I'm... Okay. Okay. That was good. I know who I think when we're going to toss it to Molly, our guest judge, and she can judge, start out her judging. We'll see how she's doing. Uh, judge the cork pop here. Who do you think won? Was it Tim or Mr. Bill? It's really hard because they were both really great, but I'm really, I think that uh, Bill, I like his pop. I thought Mr. that was Bill. good. Yeah, yep. that, that's what I was thinking too. So Mr. Bill. Last <laughs> week. Yeah. Yeah. This solid, Cheers. clean Hi. pop. <laughs> Cheers, gang. All right. What we'll do next, we'll take that quick break. And then when we come back, it is cocktail contest time. We're going to be in judging mode. So we'll do that in just a few. Hello, this is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network. And let's talk for a moment about our sponsors, the people that make this show happen. First up is our friends at Moonshine University. In 2017, I completed my Executive Bourbon Steward Certification at their office in Louisville. The information I learned through lead instructor Colin Blake and their team there is something that I continue to draw upon frequently in my role at the ABV Network. It truly is the standard of establishing a benchmark of knowledge of the bourbon industry. From history to production to brands and people, it's all there. Check out their full listing of programs, including Executive Bourbon Steward Certification, production classes if you're considering starting a distillery, and much more at moonshineuniversity.com. I also want to talk about Neely Family Distillery. Back in May of 2018, I met Royce Neely at Limestone Branch's Craft Bourbon Festival. It ended up not only being the start of a great friendship, I started to truly learn about what makes craft whiskey so amazing. You see, I had been a bourbon drinker for over 30 years at that point, and like many people who had been drinking bourbon a long time, I was hard-coded into thinking Big Bourbon was where it was at and Kraft was on a journey to get there. Spending time with Royce and learning the things he does to make his whiskey taste better started to really get me to appreciate how things like sweet mashing, open-top fermentation, pot distillation, and the grains you are using not only makes your product taste better coming off the still, but also out of the barrel as well. I still love heritage brands and they make up a bulk of my collection. But when you find a craft distiller that is truly dedicated to the craft of distilling, you are drinking some of the best whiskey out there on the market today. That's exactly what's happening at Neely Family Distillery today. Check them out on the web at neelyfamilydistillery.com, or better yet, stop by and see them at their distillery in Sparta, Kentucky. And now, back to the show. Hello, this is Danny Kennard, and I'm 
Recording on the ABB Network. Welcome back to the Bourbon Daily. Today, we are judging our cocktail contest for July's winner. Yes, we are. So, uh, what we'll be doing is we'll have our August three individuals winner. preparing. <laughs> yeah, August winner. So, I didn't, maybe I didn't think that McDonald's. That's our August winner. Uh, so, so we've got three. Uh, unfortunately, one can't be here. So, we'll have a video of our third contestant for the evening. But what I'd like to do first is just introduce our contestants and tell us a little bit about what they'll be preparing. So first up is going to be Adina Ewalds. Adina, what are you going to be making for us tonight? Hi, I'm going to be making um, a little cocktail. I'm calling Not All Beaches Are Equal. Okay. okay. <laughs> and that kind of ties into the theme because it is a, a beach theme this month and, and they must use sea salt. So hopefully everyone has remembered to use sea salt. Uh, to be eligible to win, you have to use that in your cocktail. All right. Uh, and wh wh what inspired this? Was it just the theme, Adina? Or as you were thinking, I know you tend to tend to really, you know, uh, think a lot about these things. So what, what inspired you to create this cocktail you've got tonight? Yeah, I do overthink my cocktails a little bit too much. <laughs> but um, I think what brought this one up was um, thinking about some of my favorite days on beaches. And they weren't always the... Uh, nice warm sandy beaches with the kids playing frisbee and stuff you know near the end of summer kind of days like this where the days are getting shorter and i tried to recreate that feeling in a drink okay all right that sounds good well we will be getting to you first so uh once we meet our, our folks here we'll be getting to you first okay. next up is your husband there also in the same room uh, mr davey waltz dave what do you got for us tonight i've got a cocktail i'm calling beaches i thought you said peaches <laughs> and and uh, it's it's a it's a kind of inspired by a song, and I'm not going to repeat it because this is a family show. And wow. uh, <clears throat> you can look up a Canadian artist called Peaches, uh, and, and you'll find out uh, probably more than you want to know. So anyway, <laughs> this oh, was, I'm glad this you're here. He's classing it up because Dave sometimes gets down to the eighth grade humor. So it's like, well, I feel like he's yeah. on his best behavior tonight because <laughs> it's more be maybe more like a tenth grade humor level. I don't know. <laughs> So one, so one person got my uh, the reference to it, so I, I got to give them applause. <laughs> so you you did this based on uh, you know obviously the theme of beaches, and then you know the song you uh, triggered that uh, that memory of that song, and that's kind of how you came up with this idea for this cocktail. Yeah, I just I wanted a cocktail that might be delicious if you're just <laughs> sitting on the beach uh, enjoying the salty spray and you know something refreshing. I love peaches and anything peach based in the summer. And uh, this, this cocktail has a lot of peach references to it. Okay. And uh, I wanted something like that. Excellent. All right. McNew, how about uh, who is our third contestant, the person who can't be here tonight? Yeah, we have uh, Mr. Kevin Majors and his cocktail was named, let me get to it here. Should have scrolled already. Nacho Mama's Colada. And <laughs> I love Kevin. Everything he does is absolutely over the top. And this just looks like a fantastic, not your mom's pina colada. Right. So uh, it's very boozy. We'll see that when we get to his video, uh, which is why I love Kevin. It's just very booze filled. <laughs> yes. You know, he was obviously in last month's contest and, and uh, he made his biggest mark. He didn't end up winning, but uh, yeah. uh, we had an event since then where Kevin was at and everybody was laughing because he referred to the glassware that he used as please use a fly ass glass. And uh, so, <laughs> so I, I don't know if he fly ass glass tonight. So yeah, you got a fly ass. I don't know that Kevin, Kevin's was kind of a traditional hurricane glass for this one. I'm looking at right now. So yeah. he's, he's upgrading everybody's glass game though. I feel like everybody needs a fly ass glass now. So yeah. <laughs> I think he, I think he has. So he's, yeah, he's definitely had some influence in, in that. Yeah. So. Very good. With that, let's uh, turn it over to Adina who will be going first. Adina, let's okay. uh, prepare that cocktail and see what we think. Okay, I'm gonna have Dave switch the camera over so you can uh, see more of the, mm -hmm. but um, this one, um, I like I explained, I'm calling it the, uh, not all beaches are equal because I kind of figured people would think of the nice warm sunny play beach. And um, this was kind of inspired by trying to recreate that feeling of the salt air, the warm sun with the cool air coming off the ocean and the uh, rocks in the background with the salt spray evaporating on those. So I kind of uh, looked for some ingredients that would kind of bring all those things together. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my glass and 
just rim it real gently with some lemon and roll it in a, just a little bit of, it's a applewood smoked sea salt. Okay. And I wanted to get the, a little bit of the smoke thinking, you know, there's bonfires in the background or, you know, something like that. A little bit of the smoke flavor. So just a, a little hint of that. Then I'm gonna take my cocktail uh, mixer. And to that, I'm gonna add an ounce and a half of peated scotch. And I'm using the Highland Park 12. Okay. I picked that because I think there's a, a little bit of the salinity to that, um, plus a little bit of the smoke. So I'm doing an ounce and a half of, of that. And then I'm going to add a little bit of drambuie. Um, kind of reminded me of the warmth of the sun. Okay. So half ounce of that. Then I'm going to use a half ounce of this uh, liqueur called Vera. And I actually had a drink made with that in our favorite cocktail bar in Buena Vista, Colorado. Um, <laughs> had a great cocktail. Uh, with this ingredient. It's actually a uh, aperitif that was considered a medicinal drink back in the day because it had quinine in it and mistel. And I might be pronouncing those wrong. Are you familiar uh, with that, Molly? I am. Yeah. Oh, okay. Is, is, is Adina right on? Is she telling us the <laughs> truth here? <laughs> you got it. Oh, no, she got it. Okay. So. Right. I just asked Wikipedia, you know. <laughs> what about, yeah. It is amazing. It really, <laughs> yes, I learned a lot on there. Right. Okay, so it's got a little bit of bitterness to it, but yet it's got some sweetness from the fortified wine that it's made with. So I'm putting that in. That's for the the uh, rock, the smell of the rocks with the water evaporating. Then I made a sage simple syrup, just a regular plain old simple syrup and put some fresh sage in it. And that is oh, one teaspoon, one teaspoon of sage simple syrup. And then to that, that was like for the plants and stuff that kind of grow around those granite rocks on the beach. Then I'm doing a little bit of saline to it to okay. just kind of heighten that salinity to it. And oops, I forgot the orange bitters. I'll be right back. Molly, we've really, we've been doing this for two years now and the, the cocktail experience has really been element. You should have seen how we got started and where, where our groups are at today when they do this. It's, it's pretty, pretty amazing to see. It, this is awesome. This is yeah, really cool. Yeah. I, I want to drink this drink. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good sign, okay. Adina. So far, so good. <laughs> yeah. So, just gonna, um, a little bit. I put three drops of orange bitters in it. Okay. okay. Going to stir it to dilute it a little bit because it is a little on the strong side. Then I am going to strain that into my cocktail glass. Okay. And it's this beautiful amber color. And then Gotta pick an herb, a uh, sage leaf off of my herb garden, and okay. just float that on the top. And oh, Dave, can you uh, get the camera to show that a little better? Yeah, Dave. Yeah, yeah Dave. Dave. Cameraman, Dave. <laughs> uh, can, you, can you see it there? <laughs> Beautiful. There you go. Okay. Beautiful. And yeah. Cheers. Enjoy. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. Very nice. Cheers. So, so Molly, we'll, we'll, we'll get to the judging after we, we do all three, but just some preliminary stuff there. As you see that, are you thinking that is bar worthy? Because uh, that's what we always play for. Is this something that could legitimately be on a cocktail menu somewhere? What are your thoughts as you take a look at that? My thoughts are it, it looks extremely balanced. It looks like she played with all of the, uh, um, every, you know, taking the scotch is like the, I, the meat portion is what I call it uh -huh. and adding these little bits of things to bring out what she wanted to. And then having a story behind it. Great. Perfectly done. I would, I want to drink this drink already. So right. I want to try it. All right. Yeah. It's awesome. 
There you go. There you go. <laughs> if, if you make the, if you make the move, Adina, to Cincinnati, who knows? You could find yourself behind Japs eighteen since eighteen seventy nine or something. If you oh, come to one. Japs, I'm throwing you behind the bar to make that. <laughs> there, there, you you know. there it is. She there you go. She'd absolutely would love, that. love it. Yeah, that would be that would be the ultimate. I would assume. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sitting on the other side. And <laughs> you that yeah. Molly's in the chair. Yeah, you. Uh -oh. you're over here. <laughs> that wouldn't be any pressure at all. No, no, not at all. Not at all. You did Nobody's a great job. Never nervous yeah. when I sit on the other side. Oh, of the I'm bar. sure. Ever. Never yeah. happens. <laughs> yeah, because because Molly does like to go out like on vacation and things like that. She'll just go to yeah. bars and then can you imagine she comes walking in? She's so famous, so people know who she is, and then she just orders a drink like an old fashioned or something. I'd be dying if I was behind the bar. <laughs> <laughs> I, I give up. I, I quit. I, I would be so nervous. I would be like, here's a beer, ma'am. I have to go. Like, have to <laughs> yeah, yeah. Drink. Go drink a beer, Molly. <laughs> It's not that bad. Yeah. Usually I just get a, I get a, I look what their whiskey lineup is and I just get that. But it's funny if anybody does make me a drink, my husband loves it because they'll be sitting there and be like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> like just, order, just order a drink, just one drink so I can watch them be nervous. <laughs> and I always tell, don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it. That's funny. So, uh, Adina, I got to give you credit there because you, you know you're going certainly through that. Uh, you're making a cocktail, with, you know, Molly. We're not; she's not sitting right in front of you at a bar, but you know, it's over Zoom here. And I think you did a great job. You held it together well, so that's that's very good, Adina. Yes, cheers, Adina. Yeah. Thank you. Way to go, Adina. Thank All you. right. Next up is Dave. Dave, just remind us a little bit again about what you're going to be making, and uh, we look forward to seeing how this comes together. I called it beaches. I thought you said peaches. And what, when I was putting together ingredients, I was kind of playing with combinations and uh, I wanted to do something with whiskey and Jägermeister, believe it or not. And, and, and contrary to popular belief, Ray, Jäger is an, actually an awesome ingredient for cocktails. It's an Amaro after all. And um, it pairs really nicely with rye whiskey, believe it or not. Okay. So I wanted to pay, uh, pair Jäger and rye together and they actually work. And then... Uh, then I wanted to do something, you know, because it's summery and I wanted something a little, with a little zip. I'm going to do a beer, a lambic beer topping on top of this, too. So uh, you can throw you can throw beer in your cocktails, too. And, and beer works kind of neat with some okay. things. And uh, I've got a peach lambic beer from Lindman's. It's a pesh, it's called, okay. which is great for cocktails. All right. Um, then all the all the ingredients I put together kind of work harmoni harmoniously together, and they they the combinations all all work. So yeah, you know, Molly Dave brings up that point of beer and cocktails, and I have seen more and more of that happening. I don't know if it's the breweries pushing that we want to play too. It's a it's a way to grow business, you know, through bars. But <laughs> is that something that you've taken on uh, taken on at at Jeff since eighteen seventy nine? Um, I don't get into the funky beers just because mm -hmm. they, they I used to. Um, I had a beer garden at one time and we got into some funky beers, really. right. but I'm not a beer drinker. I've never, I've never been a beer, big beer drinker. Um, but I do have a lot of friends who own breweries and I think it's really cool to see what they're doing. And I am a big fan of beer cocktails. Like okay. I would drink a beer cocktail. I, beer cocktail. I make a okay. ton of them. I, I, I love that. I, I love this. I'm so excited about this. All right, Dave, that's, that sounds like a good setup there. So let's see what you got, my friend. And I'll, I'll add to this, that this lambic is not too funky. It's not a sour, even though it is a lambic. It's pretty sweet. Okay. It's got a li little bit of tartness to it, but not like a like a, if you're thinking sour. Classic, so. Not like a classic sour. It's right. Like that. Yeah. All right. So we're going to begin to build this. I'm going to get some ice in the shaker. You'll notice I'm using a scoop tonight, Steve. I'm not using my hands. <laughs> <laughs> he got busted okay. using his hands one time, Molly. So. <laughs> Hey, I was making the cocktail it's for me. Drink drink, so it's for all you, you're allowed to do that. But if you're making drinks for other people, big no no. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> That's why it was so funny that night. So we're going to start out with a nice rye. I'm, I'm using Sazerac rye. Okay. Ooh. So we're going with a couple. I don't like that jigger. That's your jigger. <laughs> it's going to throw me off completely. Okay. So we're going to go with uh, two ounces of Sazerac. Okay. Sazerac's always a good choice. I like that rye yeah. whiskey. It's very good. Then we were going with three quarter ounces of Jaeger. Okay. So. This I'm interested in. I've never tried that mm -hmm. mixed together. You're saying Ryan Jaeger are good. I've never tried that. They do. 
Okay. I like gin and Jaeger too. Gin and Jaeger. Okay. Okay. So then we're going to go with a teaspoon of uh, fresh lemon juice. Then we're going to go with two ounces of peach nectar. So I'm just using the Humax nice uh, fresh or 100% peach nectar, not fresh, but yeah, yeah. it's 100%. Okay. So then we're going to go with uh, about 10 drops or so of Old Forester Bohemian bitters. So this is a really, really interesting bit bitters that goes well with these ingredients. What did you say the bitters were? Old Forester Bohemian. Bohemian ones. Okay, cool. <clears throat> About 10. Okay. Then a uh, pinch of uh, red Hawaiian sea salt. So the, I found that sea salt brings out the citrus a little bit more. and kind of makes the cocktail pop. So okay. into the Boston shaker. Uh oh, one hand on the shaker there, Molly. That's that's, that's the Rockford tough, right? shimmy. I think that's the Rockford <laughs> shimmy shake there. Yeah, that... my notes are shake vigorously over ice. <laughs> would you say if he was working at your bar, Molly? Would you say anything to him? It'd be like two hands at all times, my friend? Or... No, because I shake one handed, and as okay. long as he has control of both uh, okay. pieces of the Boston, he's good. All right, just he's making sure. Really well. <laughs> like a technique i'm very impressed yeah. right. we're, gonna try, we're gonna strain into this fly ass glass then <laughs> kevin majors so that leaves me with a nice uh, amount of head space so i can uh, top it with my lambic okay so i'm gonna pour it so it, it makes a little head here too and foams up because i want a little bit of foam on the top here we go uh-oh oh that looks pretty oh <laughs> cheers <laughs> cheers Bridges, cheers okay all right the uh, overflow there molly is that playing in at all uh, in, into your mind as you look at that or not or not does that just happen sometimes that just happens but i will share a technique with you to make sure that doesn't happen but i'll wait to the end <laughs> okay all right there you go tip coming so I, hey, that's that's a tease that that means you got to hang on through this thing it's, throughout the, it's through. not something that's very well known so i mean it happens even when i don't when i don't use a technique i get overflow all the time so okay. you just never can tell so okay. it's okay all right. all right. So in this, you got the spicy rye, you got some peach, a little bit of the, the herbalness from the Jaeger. Uh, the bitters bring a little bit more herbs and spices into the whole thing. And then the sea salt just makes everything pop. All right. All right. Uh, again, Molly, just kind of, you know, the, the flavors, do you, do you feel like this was well constructed? And, and again, something that you feel could be potentially worthy of being available at a bar or restaurant? I do see, uh, you know, it's a very interesting, I do like using Jaeger in cocktails as well. I'm not mm -hmm. a big Jaeger bomb girl, surprisingly. I know it's weird, <laughs> but um, I do, I do appreciate Jaegermeister as, as you know, what it is. Um, if it wasn't marketed so bad for college students, yes, it yeah. would be, I think, a lot more respected than it is today because it is a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful Amaro, beautiful German Amaro. Um, they, uh, I'm surprised that you use Sazerac only because I find Sazerac to be a lighter rye rather than mm -hmm. a bolder rye. Like, um, I would see, uh, like Knob Creek being more, more bold or something to compete with that Jaeger. Um, but I think everything else, especially just using a dash of the lemon with the salt is really, really cool. And I have not had the Bohemian Old Foe bitters yet, but now I need to get those and try them. It's <laughs> really weird. And this sounds good. Um, yeah. And I love that you made a beer cocktail. It is such a really cool thing that those are starting to come back. They're a very old way of making drinks. So I'm very impressed by that and with the peach. So I would be, I would totally try this. I okay. would. All right. Yeah. So I didn't realize that's an, uh, that's an old technique. I thought this was kind of a modern era thing, but you're saying back in the day, the beer would be incorporated into cocktails and stuff. Mm -hmm. oh, that's cool. Definitely. Yeah. Very cool. It's out of a <laughs> boiler maker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Boiler maker. yeah. Again, that sounds like a college days for me. The boiler maker. Yes, yes. It's taking me back. A, a blue long. collar day. Blue okay. collar days. It, it was. It was the uh, beer and, and drinks were all the way back to like uh, even um, the Middle Ages. They were using ale in drinks and um, like punches and things like that. So it's very old. Very yeah. old. Really cool. Very cool. All right. Last but not least is Kevin Majors, and um, we have to play this one on video. So we'll uh, hit go and uh, and watch what Kevin has to say. Okay, here we go. 
Okay, Kevin here. Gonna give you the uh, pineapple banana colada. I'm gonna slice up some pineapples. You can do it. I'm gonna show you this drink a couple of different ways. Um, ingredients. Mandatory ingredient with sea salt. So we got our ancient sea salt here. Um, I made a, and the theme was beach. So, uh, what other drink is better than a colada? I spun the colada to pineapple banana. Because it has bananas in it and the pineapple. So, nevertheless, you can do this drink a couple of ways. It's really fire either way. Um, and I'm going to slice up a couple of pineapples here. So, you can use it fresh or you can use fresh tastes better. But you can also use um, 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 just straight out of the can and freeze them. Um, mm -hmm. Throw them in there. But you got to freeze some bananas too. you got to freeze about a banana to banana and a half. All right, let me get a little slice. See, this is the fresh little pineapple and everything. But I'm going to cut this video off real quick because y'all don't need to see me slicing pineapple. <laughs> okay, so for the uh, production values pineapple. are incredible. Some of the old from when I did it before. We got some frozen. We got some fresh. We're going to throw it in here to make the frozen portion. But I'm also going to make this drink um, non-frozen because it tastes really well there. Got about um, three quarters cup of pineapple and about a banana to a banana and a half. This serves one or more. Um, depends on how much you want to drink because it's roughly five and a half to six ounces. Depends on how heavy pour you do. I'm not an exact guy. So we're <laughs> going to start off with roughly a half an ounce of the Coco Rio, which we give it a little squeeze in there till it's about at a half. We're going to stop there. Uh, we're going to then also use, we got the Bacardi, Bacardi Tropical, limited edition. We use about an ounce to a heavy ounce and a half-ish of that. We are going to use uh, Bacardi Rum, also pineapple. Same amount. You know, these are pretty easy because we want to do these drinks pretty easy and pretty quick. So we got roughly ounce to ounce and a half of that. Now, we also used, and what I did was to get the banana flavor, that sort of thing here, I soaked some bananas in some rum. The rum that I used was a Cruzan. Uh, it was a uh, dark Cruzan, uh, black Cruzan, and it was a 50 of that and a 50 of regular, um, I forget the name of it now, but it's in the listing. But, and I threw through a little a pinch of sea salt in here also to, I don't know, I guess extract some of the flavors from the banana, but we're going to use roughly an ounce to an ounce and a half of that. Then later, um, I'm going to show you how to tune up that frozen drink there. Um, we're going to actually use some of those uh, ripped bananas. I call them ripped bananas because they've been soaking in alcohol. Uh, so we're going to use some of those in the frozen portion. This here, we got Evan Williams bonded. Uh, we're going to use roughly the same amounts of that. Uh, from that, we're going to take now and add some ice. Where is? I'm going to take the shaker lid because I don't want you guys to penalize me uh, like you guys did before. Not me, but another person. And throw that That's not wrong. <laughs> in there. A little bit more ice we need. And... A splash of this dole replenish. Pineapple juice and coconut water. Get that little shake. This was in the freezer. Give that a, just a little splash to uh, thin out, help thin out some of that and add some more fluids to that. So we go with roughly an ounce of that to that cocktail. So you take that. Woo! Give a little shaky poo. I don't know that fancy shake y'all guys be doing, but we get that little shake. And that's pineapple juice. And that's why you get your little foamy feel. So I let that sit. Now, from that, we're going to use and we'll go with an up on that. So we cut the pineapple. We cut off the discards. Take some of that pineapple and rim that glass really good with the pineapple that we're going to discard. Uh, oh, that's all we got, Steve. That's what we got. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, like I said, he did four different ones, so I don't. I, I, I maybe even got confused with what he was saying. So yeah. we have to judge based on that. We we saw where he was going with this. Hold yeah. on, I do got the picture. Yeah. The final. Do you have it, Tim? Yeah, I do. 
Yeah, okay. I got it. Yeah, because the photo, the photo does him a lot of justice. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is this cocktail looks amazing. It does. Uh, so he was doing a, a regular one, then he was going to do a frozen one there too, right? So correct. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Look at that. Wow. Look at that. That's beautiful. Yes. Fly ass glass. Yeah. Fly ass glass. Fly ass glass. 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 <laughs> Not your mama's fly ass glass. Oh, <laughs> no. Not your mama's you colada. Okay. All right. All so right. there we go. As you saw that one, Molly. And again, unfortunately, I don't know what, what happened with the video there. Uh, that might have been just uh, sent the wrong one or something like that. But was he on the, was he on the right track with what he was doing? There? He, I think he was. A, that is a boozy drink. That'll mm -hmm. have me laid out on the beach. <laughs> um, yes. But I think the, the flavors will would come together. I think it would be a, little, a bit sweeter and very boozy. But that's right. what tiki drinks are all about. This is that's a straight up tiki, uh, phenomenal drink. So I know a lot of people who would really get into that. Really, right. really into that. So, do you do you feel like as 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 you're as you're building you know cocktails and, and working on your next cocktail menu or that? Are you also thinking how long it takes to build? Because that that one does oh, seem God, like it yeah. would take a while. Yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, it, yeah. it's really important. Um, the things that I put on the list are you know three to four ingredients and okay. stuff that's really easy. And um, some, some drinks I actually batch myself so I can make sure there's consistency and quickness so I could get the drinks out as quick as possible. Yeah. So yeah, I, there's just a few, but okay. um, it, it does. I want to make sure that everybody gets their drinks in a timely manner as much, especially being um, short staffed. So we have to do it as fast as possible. So, yeah. Yeah. I just put a new cocktail list together for next week. So I'm just yesterday. <laughs> You're right in tune with the, what we're doing here tonight. Then, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, from our studio audience here, let's hear a round of applause for our participants because they all did a great job. For sure, a for sure. Absolutely. So it is now time to judge. For our judges, what we always like to do is share a little feedback for each of the three cocktails and then just rank what, what you thought was your favorite. And there's no wrong answer because it's personal personal opinion. Right. First, second, and third ranked from favorite, next favorite to third favorite. Uh, our first judge that's going to be weighing in is Tim. Tim, you're going you're gonna to go first for us. So, again, weigh in on, on all three and then share the, the judging or the scoring at the end, okay? Sure. You got it. So, uh, Adina, you hit me right in the soft feelies because uh, <laughs> I love my peated scotch. Love the Highland Park. Uh, and uh, you remind me of my father who loves Drambuie. And he also loves peated scotch, and I can envision exactly what you have uh, going on there. Uh, I thought that was was really something. Uh, Dave, I still see what you're flinging with, and I love the themes, the underlying themes across all your cocktails. <laughs> um, and I, I, I was the, the Jägermeister gets me, but with the rye whiskey pairing it out and drowning it out, it's it's something I got to try, uh, and not hold my nose with a with a garbage can next to me ready to Ralph. Uh, and I have to give you a bonus point for not being disturbed by uh, uh, what allegedly I saw Adonis walk through one of the screens in the background in their underwear uh, yeah. behind you. Yeah. And, you were not Neely. and the internet never forgets. We post this on the internet. So the internet never forgets. So. Exactly. So we'll, we'll be able to determine the culprit as it was, but I thought that was spectacular. You get, you get a bonus point there for not getting distracted. He did not know that you can see this entire area. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the camera and can only see a foot I in front looked, of it. I looked at him and I said, I'll show you what I got. <laughs> 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 that, that entire area is not all that we saw, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> you, we're lucky that he decided to have on pants. Well, I <laughs> not either way. Not even a joke. Okay, well. And then my, my last comments for Kevin Majors, he, that, that cocktail reminds me of one I had in Hawaii at the, the uh, Hawaiian Hilton called the Island Itch. Okay. Uh, it, it, it brings me back to some asshats sitting next to me drinking his $12 Bud Light laughing at me when I have this Island Itch cocktail looked exactly like that, but it had a back scratcher in it. So I asked the bartender <laughs> what was in that. Nice. What's in that? He, he pulls up four bottles of booze and I paid Eleven dollars for mine, so he can go drink his twelve dollar Bud Light <laughs> while I can't feel my teeth after two drinks. Uh, yeah. So, oh, Kevin, wait. that one that one hits me right there. So, with that being said, I, I Adina, you really got me on that because I can envision it, I can see it, I can taste it. You hit all this, the hot spots that I really enjoy. Adina's first, uh, Kevin number two, <clears throat> and Dave number three. Dave number three. Okay, all right. Thank you, Tim. 
Next up is Mr. Bill. Mr. Bill, give us again your thoughts on the cocktails and then your ranking. Okay. Um, Adina, um, I'm not a scotch drinker. However, your story was awesome. It reminded me of some of the beaches that I've been to and some of the nicer sand beaches weren't as nice, weren't as much fun as some of the, the gravel beaches because of the nightlife where you got awesome drinks like this. Um, the uh, um, uh, notes, notes, Dave, um, your drink uh, looked pretty interesting. Um, uh, we drank uh, our share, our fair share of uh, Jägermeister when uh, when uh, I was in Germany. Uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, and then Kevin's was pretty pretty awesome too. That looked like a, a more traditional beach drink. But a little on the boozy side. You're going to have uh, one or two of them, and then that's the end of your day. So, uh, right. yeah. So uh, uh, I'm. I actually have changed my ranking. Okay. Um, um, I read through things first, and then I, I kind of gave a, a listing of, of a ranking of what I thought just from. Reading from, it from our listening, o- yeah, just for, real quick, Bill, for our listening audience because they can't see any of this. Yeah, uh, uh, we, we send out notes beforehand what the what the cocktail ingredients are, as well as a photo of them. So, kind of what to expect to make sure, kind of the checks and balances as they make them. Does it look like what they what they submitted for the recipe? So, uh, with that, you're talking about the notes you saw. Uh, exactly. Front. So go ahead. Exactly. So, yeah. So uh, uh, I would I would go uh, Adina's first. Okay. And then Dave, and then uh, Kevin's. Then Kevin. Okay. All right. Next up is Molly. <laughs> okay. So I thought all the drinks are, were beautiful. I totally would drink every one of these. Um, but, you know, I think a story is like probably more than half of the cocktail. And for me, a story is everything. When I can tell a story with the cocktail, it's awesome. So Adina's, I love your story. I could, I like everything you thought through and, um talked about i could totally see that and you gave me an experience and that was so cool plus i would i can't wait to try this drink i think it sounds so beautiful everything you put together like i said is everything that is complimenting that peated scotch and bringing out something brand new in it and i think that's just beautiful so i love that um the second one uh dave there was dave right yep Yep. Cool. I was right. Okay. I am, I, I, like I said, I love a great, um, beer cocktail. Not a lot of people do beer cocktails and you know, uh, you're right. You can, uh, mix beer and wine and everything into a cocktail. You really can. You think it up, you can put it in there, but I love that you used beer in this and you used a very special beer and worked with the flavors. Um, the only thing I, like I said, I would have used a stronger rye, but you know what? I can't taste it. So I would probably be surprised and be like, wow, this really does work. I love Sazerac rye. It's one of my favorite ryes on the market. Um, and I'm really impressed that you use Jägermeister too. So really cool. And the peach, I think will go really well together too. And for Kevin's, uh, you know, that's a classic uh, tiki drink. I mean, oh, yeah. I would totally want to try that on the beach for sure um there were some techniques that i didn't like with Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but i would look past i could not look past that at the bar but i look right. past that at the home bartender so my um ranking is going to be adina first and then okay. uh dave and then kevin dave and then kevin okay and molly if you do try this drink i'd love to know what you think I will. I, I will try it when I go to the bar. I just have to get the Amaro. It's a. <laughs> yeah. That was hard to come by. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're not. It's not easy to find. Um, and I do want to try. I, I think I'd try all these, but I got to get those Bohemian bitters for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're they're good. They're good. <laughs> All right. I'm up next and I'll say this, you know, uh, again, Dina's got a tough road uh, with me because I notoriously don't like scotch, mm-hmm. particularly the PD ones. That's a, that's a, that's hard for me. And I, I feel like 
Adina's does have the best story. I, I, and again, very well constructed and all that, but it feels like one that I would drink at a bar like Molly's. And I thought with the beach theme, we should try to think of what we, again, it just might take, cause we're all talking about our personal feelings. What, what would be best drank on the beach? And, and uh, so I, I felt like that was more of kind of a classic cocktail with a bar, with a beach spin, whereas the other two were more beach focused. So, uh, and Dave's was interesting. I liked all the ingredients in it. I, I thought that was really cool. Kevin's, uh, again, unfortunately, his, his video cut off, but we know where he was going with that. And that also looks really good and, and a classic one. But again, there's a lot of steps there. So we have to take into consideration, too. That would be, you know, a half hour of him <laughs> to make that. And that's tough in a, in a bar situation. So with all of this in mind, I would say for me, the top one was Dave and then Kevin, number two. And I had Adina coming in at number three. McNew, you're, the, you're our last judge. What did you do? Um, ignore my dogs. Um, so these were all fantastic as always. Um, Adina, like your story just made me like feel like the last night of a beach vacation, like when it's cooler and it's kind of cold and you're like walking around the beach in like a sweater and shorts still drinking. Just so many memories there. It was lovely. Um, Dave's yours was great. Um, not a beer fan here for the Jaeger and everything else though, but it looks like something my husband would get for brunch. And I, I'm here for that because he would love it. And um, Kevin Majors, I would absolutely order this for breakfast um, <laughs> um, on vacation because you put bananas in it. I'm like, it's a damn smoothie. I'm having that for breakfast, <laughs> but I'm having a good day. Okay. <laughs> so uh, when I, when I, Put this together i was like beach day it's august it's our last beach month for you know us westerners so uh kevin majors is my first because he just gave me all the beach vibes he did a great job with the garnishes um i love a really boozy cocktail and i don't care how long it takes to get to me as long as i get it um especially <laughs> if it's the first thing i have in the morning so kevin's my first um, adina's my second because she really just put a story together and brought back all those memories and uh, Dave is my third. Um, my husband would absolutely put you first, but you're my third. <laughs> okay. Okay. That means we have a clear cut winner. So uh, congratulations to Adina who scored 12 points versus her two competitors both scored nine. So they both tied for second. So congratulations to Adina Ewalds, our champion. Adina, how does that feel? Um, it's amazing. I mean, to be Dave's cocktail, I know, is delicious. I've had a few of those. And the beer just, it's a its a very low alcohol beer, but it just gives it that little bit of zing to it. So to, to beat him, um, thats I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> uh, yours is pretty damn delicious itself. So, yeah. so the and beer, in addition to the three ounces of alcohol that you put in first? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> little zing? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it gives you a little bit of carbonation. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey Ewald, uh, yeah. how many nights a week do you guys uh, drink craft cocktails? <laughs> so, you know, I come back from, I come home from a hard day at work. She's retired. So I come home and, here, try this. Well, it's, that's Monday. Tuesday, <laughs> here, try this. <laughs> Wednesday, here, try this. So it, it doesn't suck. <laughs> you're, you're kind of living the life here dave realistically yeah. realistically we probably only do the craft cocktails once or twice a week yeah mm -hmm. i mean I'll, sometimes it's a gin and tonic or you know something like that too so okay. I'll say this, Adina, and, and of course, we'll go through the process and, and you're going to be in the finale anyway, and there will be a, a winner uh, crowned and maybe even this cocktail will be the one that ends up winning the whole thing. But I, I wouldn't care about any of that. If winning the, the night where Molly uh, Wellman was a was a judge, to me, that's bigger than even winning the championship. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, so that's that's pretty cool. So you talk about bragging rights in your house. Uh, yeah, that's that's big. So that's yeah, all that. Uh, again, I think I'm going to try to make this interesting. I like to throw a flag on the play and okay. call a finale pass. A, a judge's finale pass to Kevin Majors. To Kevin Majors. Oh, so Ke <laughs> I'd like to really dial this one up because that uh, uh, if I'm going to if I'm going to you know have one shot in the gun, that's the one I want to be drinking on a beach. That's the one you want to be drinking. Yeah. I think that I one forgot that we had passes. I forgot that was a thing. <laughs> cool. Oh. 
I, 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 that one there just reminds me of sitting on, like I said, on a beach in Hawaii. That, that is an there, Easter. There's all three of these are just spectacular. They, I don't know how it you, was a great month. It was a great, yeah, month. this was just a great, great month. <laughs> but not all beaches are equal, Tim. And that's why you win the, the going one in all three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I made a copycat of Adina's. That one, I had what I needed to get it done, basically. Uh -huh. And even, even the copycat version is probably pretty similar. Very good. I happen to have a thyme syrup that I made here instead of okay. sage. And I didn't have your fancy brrr. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> sweet, vermouth, sweet vermouth, which is close enough. But I have yeah. a grand buoy that's been sitting in the cabinet since, I don't know, 20 years ago. Right. So it's good to finally use that. So good. This is Vicky so good. following along at home, and I love it. She kept up, too. Yeah. Yes. She oh, did it in real time. She did it real time. She came up on my stool. I had to dig the drambuie out of the cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. It's a workout. It? You end up burning off the calories of the drink because you had to yeah. run around and get all the, the ingredients quickly. So, yeah, but yeah. the banana thing, I had. I, was, I wasn't prepared about that. I don't oh, have no. a peach beer. I'm no, not going to open beer, tough. you yeah. know. Yeah. But I yeah. did do my peach shrub in my whiskey to finish, so... Oh, cool. cool. There you go. There you go. Well, that sounds amazing. One last round of applause for Adina. Great job, Adina. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Before we wrap this up, Molly was going to share that tip. If you're making a beer cocktail, uh, what, what can you do so it doesn't spill over the glass as you're getting ready to serve that thing? So, do you guys have a uh, bar spoon at home that has the twisted yeah. handle? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, if you stick that in be right before you're going to pour a carbonated product into your cocktail just stick that whole spoon in and then pour slowly the beer or the champagne or whatever is carbonated slowly down that twist the spoon it'll uh dispense or disperse the bubbles and you won't have the volcano happen really yeah oh, wow. <laughs> thank you Molly. thanks <laughs> that is it, might take a little bit, it might take a little bit longer but you will save your alcohol <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's what it's all about save, save your alcohol folks excellent well uh mcnew what do we got for next month what's going to be our theme next month and what's the mandatory ingredient in case anybody yeah so um i put these together and i'm a real big fan of fall as soon as i can get into fall and it is the apple of my eye because it's september and you need to use apple butter or applesauce okay all right. So, yes, if you want to get in on this, you can head over to abvnetwork.com. We've got our cocktail contest out there uh, on the website. So check it out. Uh, and I think it's in two places, cocktail contest or under uh, abvnetwork.com slash coin, because you do need our yeah. coin to and, participate um, in the contest. Vicky asked for past recipes. I want to send those to Steve. So look for those soon, too. Yeah, we're going to add those to the website. That'll be uh, yeah. a value add that we do. So they'll be out there and available. Excellent. Well, we'll wrap this show up as we always do by talking about where people can find us. We'll go around to our guests judges here molly where can people find you if they want to follow your journey online you you can find me at molly wellman on facebook or instagram uh or at japsotr.com excellent excellent of course get down if you're in, in cincinnati head over to japs since 1879 uh world's greatest uh, cocktail bar uh, all <laughs> big bourbon selection and of course molly wellman especially on tuesday nights if you want to sit tuesday there and, nights. And, uh, tuesday that's, nights that's my jam tuesday there nights and then i'm there on the weekends usually of course yeah that's when i see her but <laughs> she's always busy so yeah <laughs> all right tim how about you man where can people find you you can find me under the corporate and private events page on abvnetwork.com or on instagram at swyguy2112 all right mr bill you can find me on Facebook at uh, Bill Lewis. All right. McNew. I am on Instagram at McNew ABV. All right. For me, I'm an easy guy to find. I'm at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. The important website to always remember those, abvnetwork.com. Not only do we have our contest rules out there, we have our virtual events. Maybe you want to do a tasting with us. We've got all those kind of things out there and so much more, abvnetwork.com. McNew, anything else to say before we get out of here? I'd like to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review. That includes comments. It helps new people find the show, which is very important to us. And if you like what we're doing, we ask that you please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash the ABV network. Very cool. Uh, appreciate uh, everyone getting involved today. Congrats to Adina on the win. Get involved in the contest. We've got one going on that kicks off today, goes to the 15th of the month. We'd love to see you guys in there and hopefully we'll see you on a future show. And of course, we'll have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. Bye. Awesome. Bye. Bye. Peace.
Before we finish the show, let's chat for a moment about Moonshine Still Pro. Moonshine Still Pro has a full line of products to help the home distiller. Whether you just want to experiment on a small scale on the stove in your kitchen or try your hand at a bigger setup in the backyard, Moonshine Still Pro can help. They have different still offerings as well as accessories and even grains from Goldstone Mill to help you make whiskey on par with what you get from your favorite distillery. They can even assist with a DIY still project by supplying some of the parts you can't make yourself. Check them out at moonshinestillpro.com. At the ABV Network, we're lucky enough to have some great friends. Amongst those friends is the Goldstein family, owners of Goldstone Mill. Goldstone Mill is a full-service mill offering a variety of heritage and heirloom grains. Their unique approach of working with mills around the country allows them to offer you affordable shipping opportunities to meet the unique needs of your distillery or brewery. They will consult with you to ensure the grains you are selecting meets the unique flavor profiles you are looking for. If you are a home brewer or distiller and you're looking for the grains that your local distillery or brewery uses, Goldstone Mill is the place to look. Check them out on the web at goldstonemill.com, call them at 217-254-6613, or shoot them an email at hello at goldstonemill.com. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production. Thank <laughs> you.